Hello and welcome to Earth Science. Once again, this is Mr. Schweitzer coming at you with a video. Um, so today we're going to be learning about planets' orbits. Um, we call a planet's orbit an ellipse. Now, here's an example of an ellipse, right? So you would normally, like, if you ask a second grader what the shape of this orbit is, they'd probably say, ooh, ooh, it's a circle, or ooh, it's an oval, right? Because an oval is really just a circle that's been stretched out. But in this case, because this is earth science, because this is high school, we don't call it an oval, we call it an ellipse, right? So question number one here, state the shape of a planet's orbit. We do not say oval, we say ellipse, E-L-L-I-P-S-E, -L -L -E, right? So here is an ellipse, right? So an ellipse describes the shape of a planet's orbit, but it doesn't describe how elliptical a planet's orbit is. So we got our orbit here, also known as our revolution. Um, we're asked here, how, uh, no, where is the formula for eccentricity? Well, in Earth science, we get this nice beautiful thing, the reference table, and the equation, aka, formula, so the little math we use for eccentricity is distance between foci and length of major axis. Now what does that mean? Well, we use that for page one of the reference table. What is eccentricity? Well, we know an ellipse is the shape of an orbit, but how do we know if an ellipse is going to be really stretched out or really almost a perfect circle? We use this right here, eccentricity. So an eccentricity of 0 0.0001 looks like a perfect circle because it's real. That number is really close to zero. So when I think of a zero, I think of a nice circle because a zero looks like a circle. So closer to zero, the more circular, and then the closer to one, right? 0 0.999. If we were to round that up, we would round that up to 1.0. So an ellipse of one looks like a flat line. A 0.99 is really just like a, almost a completely flat line. Does this make sense? Hope so. Not going to save that image. Okay. Um, so, eccentricity describes the ellipse or the shape of the ellipse. So if an ellipse is a perfect circle, that looks like a zero, right? So that means it's going to be close to zero. If an ellipse is stretched out, that's close to a straight line, right? Which looks like a one equals something that's really gonna be flat. Well, a one is really actually flat, but close to one is flat. A zero looks like a perfect circle. Um, so hopefully that makes sense. Now, we're actually gonna find the eccentricity of an ellipse. So here it says, find the eccentricity for foci A. Now, if you look here, We've got two dots that say A, we got two dots that say B. Well, it's asking me to find the eccentricity of foci A. Let me make sure this is visible. Okay, we're good. So I'm given this, I'm given my little cup. I can put that to the side. And I'm given two push pins here, right? Since we're trying to find the eccentricity of A, I'm gonna put this right in the middle of the dot of A. Let me just poke that through and then right in the middle of the dot of location A on this side. Notice that I keep them sticking out just a little bit, right? I'm not all the way through, so then I can put the string right on those metal parts. Let me get this set back. Okay, so I've got my string here, right? I don't want to pull it, so make the knot come out. I just want to keep it nice and tight there. So, I get my ellipse going. I pull this string out. I like to start at the top. Oop. Notice my mistake, I need this to be all the way down on the metal part. So now that my string is on the metal part, right? You guys see that, hopefully. String is on the metal part, I'm going to draw my ellipse nice and smooth and careful. The part that really matters is making sure that this part on this major axis is set and oops, this part on this major axis is set too. All right, came out pretty well, not too good, but you know, this is the really important part, right on our major axis, this line across the widest part of our ellipse. I take my push pins, 
put them back in my cup, take my string, put them back in my cup. You can wait till the end for this. I would suggest waiting for the end. Just push them to the side for now. But here's my ellipse, right? So I need to find the eccentricity of foci A, or for foci A. So here's my eccentricity formula. Distance between foci, well in this case the foci is gonna be letter A and letter A over here. And then we're gonna find our length of major axis. Length of major axis is this line that goes across here. Notice that our two foci lay on the major axis, right? So I'm gonna take my ruler, give me one sec. Now, since this is a science class, are we going to be using inches or are we going to be using centimeters? All right, hopefully you said it. Hopefully you said centimeters. So I'm going to find my distance between my foci and I'm going to be as accurate as possible. So let me get my head in here. I got to have that right over the dot and then this right over the dot. I've got three point between 3.8 and 3.7. I'm gonna just choose 3.7. So I got 3.7 centimeters divided by, let me go back to this. So I got my distance between foci. Now I need my length of major axis. My length of major axis is gonna be from one end of the orbit to the other end of the orbit. So I put zero, remember zero is this mark right here, not the edge of the ruler. This mark here, this long is the, the star. So I get that perfectly lined up there, right along my major axis. And this number is gonna be just about 17.8 centimeters. 17.8 centimeters. Oops. Let's find the calculator. No calculator. But now we just plug it into a calculator. I've got three point oh, three point seven divided by seventeen point eight. And I get all these numbers here. What we really care about are these first three, right? And then we gotta see how this fourth number, this eight here, is gonna possibly round this up or keep it the same. So we go by the rule of five. So I'm gonna go 0 0.20. The eight is gonna change this seven up into an eight. So my eccentricity is 0 0.208. Now, if we divide centimeters by centimeters, we actually cancel those out. So we're gonna drop those. This is probably the only time you're ever gonna write a number in earth science without units. So we got an eccentricity of 0 0.208. Compare the eccentricity of ellipse A, this is ellipse A, to uh, the eccentricity of Venus. Here's Venus right here. And I'm gonna look along the top column, eccentricity, e oh, there's eccentricity, eccentricity of orbit. So Venus's eccentricity is 0 0.007. Now a lot of kids will say, okay, I'm comparing them. My eccentricity was 0.28 and Venus's eccentricity is 0 0.007, done. Well, that is not comparing the two of those things. We have to say one is greater than the other. So which ellipse is a higher number? This ellipse is a higher number, so ellipse A, I'm going to say ellipse A has a greater eccentricity than Venus, right? Compare the eccentricity of ellipse A to Mars. Mars has an eccentricity of 0 0.093, point 0, look at that zero. That zero comes after the decimal. I've got a two right after the decimal. So the eccentricity of Mars is also gonna be less than my eccentricity. So I'd write ellipse A has a greater eccentricity than Mars, right? Now, here's the real interesting part. Place a hashtag on the ellipse. Here's my ellipse. Place a hashtag on the ellipse where the planet's speed is the greatest. Where is this planet gonna be moving the fastest? Well. 
First off, we've got to decide whether this is going to be our star or this is going to be our star. So I'm going to write, um, just going to randomly choose this one. That's my star. Okay, so since my star is here, let's take a look at this image here. Where does this planet move the fastest? When it's all the way away from the star? Look slow there. Or right next to the star? Boom, 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 boom. There it goes, real quick around there. Okay, so it's definitely going to be fastest near the star. I am near my star. I need to place a, place a hashtag where the star is going to move the fastest. Here's the key part. This is our major axis, right? Star is always going to be moving the fastest and the slowest somewhere on the major axis. So my hashtag is going to go right on the major axis, right? As accurate as possible. I'll even put a dot. That's where my planet is going to be moving the fastest. Now, if we want to find out where the planet is moving the slowest, we're going to place a money symbol because I'm money uh, where the planet is moving the slowest. So fastest here. That means all the way on the other side of our major axis. I'm going to do my money sign. That's where it's going to be moving the slowest. All right? So planets always move the fastest when they're closest to the star, and they move the slowest when they're furthest from the star. It's always on the major axis. This shape here is an ellipse, right? It's a stretched out circle, not an oval. And the number that we give to this ellipse is called the eccentricity, which is whether it's going to be close to zero, where it looks like a perfect circle. This one's I mean, to your eye, it looks like a perfect circle, but it's a point two, so it's not perfect. And then if it's close to one, so if we round this up and become a one, it's a very flat and long ellipse there, okay? That'd be like a comet it has a nice long ellipse. So hopefully this made sense. Hopefully you think I'm cool. Hopefully life is good. It's May. It's the end of the year. Let's start killing it. Good luck.